Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to explain you the working of a Type B chopper. And trust me, after watching this video, you will be able to analyze the operation of a Type B chopper on your own. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you'll be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get started. So this is the circuit diagram of a Type B chopper. So it basically requires an EMF that is also called as a battery load. So if you don't use E, you will not get the desired operation. So what I mean by desired operation? let us try to understand the circuit configuration by assuming two cases that is when the switch is on what happens and when the switch is off what happens at the first place let us assume when the switch is on that is we are triggering this particular switch by providing a gate pulse consequently the circuit looks like this how do we say that so when the switch is on it acts as short circuit so I am representing it in this particular fashion consequently there is a EMF that is used that is basically the battery so E uh, the battery is represented as E over here. It starts giving energy to the inductor. Inductor starts cho charging with the polarity plus and minus in this particular fashion. So the voltage across the inductor is assumed to be equal to VL. Consequently, the current flows through this path. So if you carefully observe, minus appears at this point, isn't it? So minus appears at the anode. And consequently, if you assume uh, or look at the circuit from this end, plus is directly connected to cathode. So this diode will be reversed bias irrespective of the fashion that you consider. If you look at the circuit from this end, minus is directly connected to anode, so it will be reverse biased. Or if you look at it this end, that is plus is directly connected to the cathode, so it will be reverse biased. Hence, it acts as open circuit. So all the current will be flowing through this particular path. No current flows through this. Consequently, it flows through this direction, and hence V out will be equal to zero. How do we say V out is equal to zero? Because this is short circuit, isn't it? If you take a multimeter and measure the voltage across the low terminal over here, it will be equal to zero. Why is it so? Because because this acts as redundant network at that point because there is a short circuit whenever short circuit is there the circuit output voltage will be equal to zero across the load terminals so once this concept is understood let us check what happens when the switch is off so when the switch is off this is the circuit diagram again how do we justify it this switch is basically open circuited and uh, e uh, is basically the emf so the a uh, property of inductor is such that it does not allow sudden change in current according to Lenz law. So what it does is that it changes its polarity from plus to minus. It changes its polarity to plus and minus in this particular fashion. So that is it was initially plus and minus. Now it is minus and plus. Consequently, it will allow the current to flow in the same direction that it was flowing originally. So it will change its polarity and allow the current and it acts as an energy source now. It will be supplying current and plus is directly appearing at this point, isn't it? So anode terminals plus is directly appearing at anode terminals of the diode. As a result, diode D2 is forward biased. Hence, it is represented as short circuit. Current flows through this path, current flows through this path and current the comes back in this particular direction. So V out will be equal to E plus VL. That is this voltage E plus the energy that is stored across the inductor. So this will be the overall output voltage. And if you observe the value of E plus VL will be much more greater than Vs. As a result, we will be saying this is a boost mode of operation. That is the voltage at the load terminals is much more greater than the supply terminals. So this indicates that V out is positive. So in two cases, we are comparing V out. The reason is very simple we need to understand in which quadrant they are operating so that is why v out is equal to zero v out is positive in both the cases v out is positive but what is happening to current i if you carefully observe current is flowing from the load in this particular fashion and current is flowing from the load to the source generally the assumed direction of current will be like this current flowing from the source to the load that is co considered as positive according to convention but here the current is flowing in the opposite direction in both the cases as a result current i will always be negative so this is very important point V out is always positive, current I is always negative. I hope these two points are clear. How is this helpful? It will be helpful for us to analyze the output waveforms. So these are the gating pulses when the switch is on, when the switch is off, this, when the switch is on. So these are the gating pulses that are provided. So what happens to the inductor current? So inductor current starts flowing in this particular way. Since the current is negative, it starts increasing in the negative direction from I minimum and goes on increasing. At some point, the energy that is stored in the inductor will start discharging, isn't it? During discharging, the current will start decreasing. So it goes back to I min in this particular fashion. Again, in the next cycle, inductor starts storing energy, current starts increasing again inductor starts discharging current starts decreasing in this particular fashion
this is the nature of inductor current it is also referred to as the load current because same current will be flowing through the load isn't it as a result now output voltage so what is the output voltage when the switch is on the output voltage was zero according to case one when the switch is off the output voltage was having some value that is e plus vl that is why we will be representing it in this particular fashion again it goes to zero again it be it will be represented with some value so i hope the waveform analysis is clear so you were able to understand this waveform i believe so how is this waveform really helpful for us? So this will be very helpful for us to decide the quadrant of operation. If you see current is always negative, so current is always negative. Output voltage is always positive. So that corresponds to second quadrant. So that is why it is also called as second quadrant chopper or you can also say that as step up chopper or boost operation of the chopper so these are other names of type b chopper so it basically operates in the second quadrant so these are some important things that you have to remember as a whole so i hope you were able to analyze the working and waveform analysis on your own in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video meet you guys in another video thank you